let G be a graph with node set V and edge set E. A subset of nodes S is called a stable set if no two nodes in S are adjacent in G. For example, for the graph here, the set containing just the node A is a stable set, and the set containing the nodes B and D is also a stable set because there's no edge joining B and D. There's no stable set of cardinality 3 because if you look at A or C, it is joined to every other node in the graph. So any stable set that contains A or C cannot have cardinality more than 1. And if we leave out A and C, all we are left with are just B and D. The maximum cardinality stable set problem is to find a stable set of maximum cardinality. And for this graph, we have already argued that there's no stable set of cardinality 3, and so the stable set B, D is a maximum cardinality stable set in this graph. And it turns out that the maximum cardinality stable set problem generalizes the maximum cardinality matching problem, and we'll see why. To this end, we need to define a line graph. The line graph of a graph G with node set V and edge set E, which is denoted by L of G, has node set E and edge set given by EF, where E and F are edges in G, and E not equal to F, and EF share an N. So for this graph G, its line graph is shown here. So every edge in G is a node in the line graph. G has five edges, A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, and CD. And as we can see, we have the nodes AC, AB, AD, BC, and CD. Now, if we look at two nodes, let's say AB and AC, they share an N, which is A, and so there's an edge joining them. But if we look at AB and CD, they do not share an N. AB, CD are distinct nodes. There's no edge joining them. And a graph H is called a line graph, if h equals L of g for some graph g. For example, this graph here is a line graph. We have the following result. Let g be a graph with node set v and edge set e. Then, a subset of edges m is a matching in g if and only if m is a stable set in the line graph of g. Let's see why this is true. Say we have our graph g and the corresponding line graph. Suppose we take a set of edges that form a matching. E1 up to EK. In the line graph, these edges will be nodes. And because no two of these edges share N, there's no edge joining any of the corresponding nodes in the line graph. And so E1 up to EK form a stable set in L of G. And conversely, if we take a set of nodes E1 up to EK in L of G, such that no two nodes are adjacent, then the corresponding edges in G, by definition, do not share an N, and so they form a matching. And from this proposition, we see that the maximum cardinality matching problem for G is equivalent to the maximum cardinality stable set problem for L of G. And this explains why the maximum cardinality stable set problem generalizes the maximum cardinality matching problem. So that's the good news, but the bad news is the maximum cardinality stable set problem is NP hard. There's currently no known polynomial time algorithm for solving this problem. But there is a polynomial time algorithm for maximum cardinality matching. Still, it is possible to solve the maximum cardinality stable set problem in polynomial time for certain families of graphs. And two well known families are the family of claw free graphs, which include line graphs and the family of perfect graphs. Before we look at what a claw-free graph is, we need the notion of an induced subgraph. Let G with node set V and edge set E be a graph. Let H be a subgraph of G. We say that H is an induced subgraph of G. If every edge in G that happens to have both ends in H is also an edge in H. For example, Let's say this is our graph G. This is an induced subgraph because if you pick any two nodes in the subgraph, if there is an edge that joins them in the original graph, that edge is also present in this subgraph. But this graph here 
it's not an induced subgraph because if you look at the nodes C and D, there's an edge joining C and D in the original graph, but it's not present in this subgraph. A claw is a graph on four nodes such that one of the nodes is joined to the other three nodes and there's no other edge. For example, let's say this node is joined to all these other nodes and there's no other edge in the graph. And you can perhaps see why this is called a claw because it looks like a claw. A graph is said to be claw-free if it does not have a claw as an induced subgraph. Let's look at an example. Consider this graph. It certainly has a claw as a subgraph, but the claw is not an induced subgraph because if we take this, an induced subgraph would require us to take these two edges as well. And one can easily check that this is a claw-free graph. However, if we look at this graph here, this is not claw-free because it does have a claw as an induced subgraph. It turns out that every line graph is claw-free. And let's see why that's the case. Suppose that we are looking at a line graph, which is L of G for some G. And we look at four nodes. And suppose that there's a claw involving these four nodes. Let's see the edges in G that these nodes have to correspond to. Suppose that this node is from the edge UV. This node has to share a node with UV, so it could be U or it could be V. And let's say this is UW. And now let's look at this node here. It has to share a node with UV, but since it cannot share a node with UW, it has to share the node V with UV. So this must be VZ for some Z. Now we look at this node, it has to share a node with UV and it cannot share any node with UW or VZ. So that means this node corresponds to an edge in an original graph that has neither U nor V as an N. And this contradicts that there's an edge joining this node and this node. So L of G cannot contain a claw as an induced subgraph and by definition, is claw-free. It turns out that the maximum cardinality stable set problem is polynomial time solvable for claw-free graphs. And in 1980, Winty and Spitty independently came up with an augmenting path algorithm. 